wolves. We are wolves on our backcountry trip to the Shoshone Geyser Basin. And it was amazing. But there was a time back when I was your age, which was totally not that long ago. Very long ago. Anyway, there was a time when you wouldn't hear wolves here because there were no wolves to be found. Not in Yellowstone and none in the lower 48. We eliminated them all. They were seen as enemies to farmers and livestock. But it turns out killing those wolves was a bad idea and had a lot of ecosystemological consequences. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you what happened when the wolves disappeared and how their return to Yellowstone is changing everything today on Nine Wolves. Today on Nine Worlds. <laughs> the elimination of the last wolf pack in Yellowstone in the 1920s had some very large consequences on Yellowstone. Once the wolves left, the elk populations went through the roof. Between 1932 and 1968, more than 70,000 elk were removed from herds at Yellowstone, either by termination or by moving them to other areas. When the park stopped killing elk in 1968, not surprisingly, population numbers went through the roof. And for decades after, there were boom and bust cycles in the elk populations. And this fluctuated as climate changed. Those hard winters, they saw elk herds decimated because the unnaturally supersized elk herds starved to death. There were literally elk bodies strewn across the landscape. The ecosystem simply couldn't handle the supersized elk populations without the wolves to keep them in check. It was frankly awful until the park reintroduced wolves in 1990. By 1996, 31 gray wolves from Western Canada were relocated to Yellowstone and they have changed everything. According to one recent study, elk numbers in the park's largest herd have finally plateaued from 6,000 to 8,000 for the past 12 years, back where they should be. No more population boom and bust cycles, no more starving, suffering elk. That's a good thing. How did the wolves do that, you mm. ask? Magic. Not magic. But it seems like magic. Well, during normal years, wolves primarily target the elder cow elk because they're usually easier to hunt. But in dry years, when food is scarce, they go after the bulls because they are weak with malnourishment. And this strategy allows the elk to remain stable over time. Wolves, like many predators, change their behavior to adapt to their conditions and are extremely adaptable. It's true, by targeting undernourished bulls during droughts, they give the cows a chance to reproduce, thus maintaining the delicate population balance of the herd. That's like a natural cycle, right? Yeah, absolutely, and it gets even more exciting. People, the wolves in Yellowstone, have grown to a population where the packs are not just stabilizing the elk herds, they're actually helping them weather the challenges of an ever-changing climate. So for example, elks are better able to manage more frequent droughts which are happening at Yellowstone. In an unpredictable world with a rapidly changing climate, having a buffer against mass die-offs becomes critical. Here, the wolves of Yellowstone play a role that even humans can't replicate. There's a lot of things humans can't replicate. So. As it turns out, humans are not that good at doing some things that nature just does on its own, people. When wolves were reintroduced in the 90s, a natural balance was restored. The elk population stabilized, reducing dramatic spikes and collapses in the elk herd. So what can we learn from all this? That is an excellent question and perhaps the most important question, especially as other places like Colorado are reintroducing wolves into their environments, possibly right now, like as we're recording this today. So the lessons from Yellowstone are invaluable. It's not just about having wolves, it's about understanding their role in the ecosystem and managing their presence wisely. Wolves almost certainly will reduce Colorado's elk population, and it is an abundant one. The 25 years of data from the Yellowstone incident tells us how to handle this sort of thing and how to do it the right way. The presence of wolves promotes elk herds that are healthier because they maintain consistent numbers and they're better able to survive at these reasonable numbers. Predators like wolves are basically nature's guardian of balance. And we don't need to learn from these so that we can use it in future problems and modern problems. Yeah, Colorado's a lot less wild than Yellowstone, so this may present some unique challenges to wolf reintroduction. But what we've learned so far has been transformative. Wolf reintroduction is a testament to our evolving understanding of our ecosystems, the world around us, and how it works. The wolves were eliminated because we didn't understand their role in the environment. We didn't understand how important they were. But now we have better science that can help us change these past mistakes. And really, that's what the return of the wolf is all about. <laughs>